Good afternoon and welcome to this special edition of Somerville Media Center Live. Today is Thursday, April 9th, 2020. I am joined by State Representative Christine Barber. Christine represents the 34, 34th Middlesex District, covering parts of Somerville and Medford. Christine, welcome to the, your first virtual show here at Somerville Media Center. Thank you, Joe, for having me, and thanks to Somerville Media Center for pulling this off. Well, first question I always ask anybody these days is, how are you doing personally? Thanks, Joe. Um, thankfully, um, uh, me and my family are doing okay. We're, we're fine. Um, and, you know, thankful for, for um, the resources we have in this. And, um, and um, I've been, you know, of course, reaching out and trying to talk to a lot of folks who are really having extremely hard times right now. And um, what has been, I think, most inspiring is a number of people reaching out to try to help each other and try to get each other through this incredibly difficult period. This is where you see the best of humanity, Christine, I guess, is the way that I'm looking at it. So speaking about people's health, people's uh, not only their physical health, but their financial health. I want to go into something right off the bat that maybe somebody, some folks don't know about you is that prior to being an elected official, you were a um, policy, healthcare policy analyst. So I'm going to just, you know, it's a very wide ranging question, but how do you think our system of healthcare is holding up during this pandemic? Um, it's a good question. And, and before I start, I just want to say, I think there's been an incredible response, especially from our local leaders who have had to really step up. But just to start by giving a shout out to especially Mayor Curtitone and Mayor Longo Kern, um, who have you know done all the right things in protecting Somerville and Medford. So I appreciate them. And when I look at Cambridge Health Alliance and other community health centers and local safety net providers, uh, they're doing incredible work. They're they're working with everyone but the most vulnerable people who uh, people who um, speak of languages other than English and, and have a lot of needs. So I'm thankful to their work. Um, we all have we all know the frontline healthcare workers are doing heroic work right now. Um, their response has been incredible. There's been a lot of challenges in getting PPE, which people probably know now is personal protective equipment. Um, it's things that people need to wear to keep the frontline workers safe. And unfortunately, it's been really hard to get enough PPE out um, to workers on the front lines. And that's something that I know I've been working on locally to try to help CHA and others get what they need, but we've been working around the state um, on that challenge. So that continues to be a challenge. Um, I think a good thing and something that I've worked on for years is that uh, healthcare and health coverage is really working. So Massachusetts has spent decades really working to improve our, our health coverage and, and we're a leader in healthcare. Um, and right now the message we're trying to get out is that if you have symptoms of COVID, you can get tested and get treatment and it will be covered no matter who you are. So depending on, it doesn't matter if you're immigration status or if you're uninsured or you don't have a job, um, there are programs and we are funding our hospitals to make sure that you can get the care you need. So we're really trying to get that word out. Um, and I will say the Baker administration has been pretty amazing about closing up those gaps to make sure people can get care. Christine, let me ask you a question about the testing part of it. I, I saw yesterday um, in the news that there is a partnership between the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the Department of Health and the CVS drugstore chain. They're gonna begin testing in a drive up way at CVS stores that have a drive up capability. And those are the 15 minute tests that were recently approved. Um, I asked city council president McLaughlin the other day when he was on the show, whether or not Somerville had any of those drive up CVS facilities and the answer is no we don't have any drive up does medford have drive up facilities and is that something that you know is being contemplated uh that's a good question in my district in medford there aren't drive up facilities that i can think of there may be one that i'm missing in in um, north medford 
Um, I, so I don't know of that, but what I know of, there's a, there's a drive up facility, as you know, at Somerville Hospital, the Cambridge Health Alliance, and they have also been taking walk ups. So I'm hopeful, I mean, in an urban area like ours, not everyone drives, that's not an option for everyone. And we don't really have that sort of infrastructure. Um, of course, it's important to um, have some, have the social distancing that we're talking about, but I'm hopeful we can find ways to, you know, have the space and still accommodate testing. So let's stay um, on, uh, let's stay on some stuff that's Somerville Medford centric. I asked, also asked Councillor McLaughlin on whether or not the Somerville Hospital, the old Somerville Hospital, um, was capable of taking in any overflow of patients or being utilized in other ways. Um, Medford, I know, had a couple of hospitals, local hospitals at one time. Are both of those or only one or none still active? And what are their plans of doing? So I just had a call actually with, they're now called Melrose Wakefield. It's the old Lawrence Memorial Hospital in yes. Serves Medford. Um, and a lot of constituents go use that system. Um, and they do still own that building uh, of Lawrence Memorial. Um, and so they have been, re, as many um, health providers are, kind of re-outfitting the building and really trying to find any space that they can um, to repurpose for emergency space and beds for the overflow that they're expecting to come. Um, right now, they, when we checked in, they were fine. They were not at capacity. They were preparing for uh, the surge that we believe is, is coming soon. Um, and I think they're using all the resources they can. So I've been really, you know, happy with the local um, response. And then one more thing, Christine, on the healthcare side, we were notified, or not notified, but I saw it on national news coverage that president of Tufts University, Tony Monaco, has or is prepping and making available some of those dormitories. Um, and I think the majority of the dormitories are in Medford. Um, but he's prepping those and ready for any kind of overflow that may be needed. So there are some, my understanding, there's some dorms in Medford. Uh, there's more in Medford. There's some in Somerville. And yes, Tufts has stepped up to make sure that employees at the Cambridge Health Alliance who um, are coming into contact and treating people with COVID don't have to go home and you know possibly infect family members. So the uh, CHA employees will have a place to stay in those dorms. Um, and then also I believe they're, they're helping the first responders in Somerville. Again, they're out every day, they're in these situations that are dangerous, they don't wanna take that home. Um, so they'll have a place to stay as well. Um, so I think it's great that Tufts is stepping up in that way. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it just, it gives you renewed faith sometimes in human, human reaction to a dangerous situation that some, there are a slew of people out there putting their own health second to the greater good. So let's go back to the healthcare system, Massachusetts healthcare system. I know it's near and dear to your heart. How are we operating now knowing that the vast majority of the eastern part of this state are going to, if we have that surge that they're talking about, and we have overflow in the Boston hospitals, how do we prepare ourselves for that, for that bad news that we think is going to come within the next three to five days? I mean, I continue to, from everything I've read, you know, we're all working with public health experts. I am, I've worked on health policy. I am by no means a, you know, a scientist. Um, so in, in talking to public health experts, by far the most important thing is to continue to stay home, uh, practice social distancing, and if you do have to go out, um, wear a face covering like a scarf or a bandana or something that you can um, fashion to cover your, your face and prevent the spread of disease and prevent, keep yourself healthy. Um, that will reduce the surge because fewer people will be getting sick and fewer people will be exposed. So that is something that we all can do. Um, I have, so the Baker administration has been setting up um, emergency hospitals in places like the Boston Convention Center, which for people who have been is an enormous space. Um, so they will be able to have a lot of extra beds and um, segregate people in places like the convention center. 
They're doing something similar with the DCU Center in Worcester. Um, so they're looking at doing that throughout the state to try to take some of the burden off, off of hospitals. And I think that the work that Tufts is doing, other, other universities and other partners stepping up is a really important piece. And I think uh, um, I'm pretty sure Councilman McLaughlin from Somerville also told me that uh, they are prepping the Holiday Inn here oh. in Somerville for any kind of need that may come. It may, they may not turn those into actual hospital rooms, but they're gonna be needed. Some kind of a space requirement that may be needed and Holiday Inn has stepped up. Great, that's great. And yeah, and I know in places like the Berkshires and the Cape that have a lot of hospitality um, and, and but have very limited maybe hospital space, they're looking at all sorts of um, options that are not being used and, and stepping up there, so. So I know the small business, um, small business operators have been, a lot of them have been crushed. I hate to use that word, but they have been crushed. Yeah. Um, there are some that are just trying to figure out how to pay next month's mortgage, next month's rent. Can you talk a little bit about from the state standpoint, what those programs are that are out there, they're gonna be assisting uh, on the commercial side of things. And then we can talk about the residential side. Yeah, so they're related. So on the state side, um, we did do a small business loan program. Um, my understanding is that it, it is out of funds at the state level right now. Um, but I can talk about the federal program. The feds have a lot more money because they don't, the state is required to balance a budget. So the feds are the ones that um, can uh, spend a lot more on these programs and are incredibly needed right now. Um, on the state level, the House just passed a bill to um, prevent evictions and foreclosures. And in the House version, that also applies to commercial property. Um, so that was something I was hearing directly from businesses in my district um, who were really scared about losing their leases. And that, so we did work to make sure that's in the House bill. I think the Senate is actually voting on that to, as we speak. And I'm hopeful that that will go to the governor as a law very, very soon. Um, so that's one piece. Um, the, um, one of the, the challenges, and I know this is only a small sector of the economy, but a very important one in Somerville and Medford is the restaurant industry, which has been crushed as well. Um, so just being able to provide takeout and, you know, you should all be, we should all be supporting our local, uh, our local favorite restaurants with takeout. Um, and something we passed last week, um, the sign into law quickly was the ability to get beer and wine at establishments that are doing takeout. Again, it's a small thing. It's a way to support businesses and, and keep some of them going during this really hard time. So but considering the restaurant industry, and I, I don't say this as the licensing commissioner over here, uh, when you look at the percentage of their sales, which is food and which is alcohol, that made immediate sense to me to endorse that and say, yes, you allow them to sell and, and for pickup and delivery, closed containers. I mean, that was a no brainer to me. So I wanna thank both you and Representative Provo and Senator Jalen. I was in touch with them, giving them my opinion, non-official opinion. Um, it got through the house very quickly. Unfortunately, this is just me, Christine, you've known me well enough. I criticize where criticism is due. Um, it moved through the Senate a little more slowly than I thought it would. But congratulations to the House side. You know I'm gonna hear from Senator Jalen about yeah. that one. So. Well, um, yeah, go ahead. A lot to do. Yeah, it is a lot to do and it's about priorities. I understand it. Um, so money for, uh, money that's coming out of either the federal system or the state system for unemployment. Mm -hmm. You wanna talk about that just a little bit? Sure, so, um, you know, as COVID has, you know, just had incredible um, ripples through the economic landscape. Um, my office is uh, hearing from a lot of people who are having trouble applying for unemployment. Surely, if you're having difficulties, call me in my office. I have uh, wonderful staff who are able to to help um, help with that. Um, so on unemployment um, in the legislature, there used to be a one week waiting period. We've gotten rid of the waiting period so you can get benefits right away. Um, there are 
many, many people applying, but I, and it is a challenging, uh, it is definitely a challenging online form that we're trying to fix, um, but apply um, and we can get benefits even if you have just reduced your hours, um, but you're still working um, or if you're sick because you're in your quarantine and you're unable to work. So definitely apply if any of those apply to you. Um, Christine, I'm sorry, what are you hearing about the uh, systems, the Massachusetts state systems? I I'm hearing anecdotally that those are, those are being overwhelmed, that people are getting very frustrated with the system crashing, the wait times, the complexity of how they do it. Is, th is that just my complaining friends or is that real? That's true. Unfortunately, that's true. Um, we unfortunately are saddled with a clunky online system from, I believe, 2012. It is, was slated to be updated, um, I believe, later this year. Um, so it's an un unfortunate time for this crisis and unfortunate that we don't have a better system. That said, I, people should go online and try to apply. Um, the sooner you apply, the sooner you'll get benefits. So don't be uh, you know, afraid of applying. One of the things that we're hearing, and we actually just, um, I led a letter to Governor Baker, which we had almost 60 uh, legislative signers on, was about translating the application. So people whose first language is not English and may not um, have English proficiency, have a lot of trouble filling out the online application. It also um, doesn't really show up on a mobile app very well. So if your internet is on your phone only, it's hard to apply. Um, again, you can call my office and there is telephone help at unemployment. Again, they're getting lots and lots of calls, so it can be challenging to get a call back. Mm -hmm. um, there were some, some updates really just in the last hour on unemployment. So people may know the federal government passed the CARES Act about a week or so ago, um, and that provides more unemployment. So one piece that we've heard is happening is um, if you're getting unemployment, there's an additional $600 a week that you'll be getting. And we just heard, this was literally within the hour that that the $600 will be starting to come to people this week and that you don't have to do anything additional besides applying for unemployment. So right. Can it, if I could just clarify it, um, Representative Barber, I just before we came on air, I was listening to Congressman Richie Neal and that program with the additional $600, his statement was it will begin Monday. Monday. Okay. Monday. We were hearing this week, but it could be in, in the next week. So I appreciate that clarification. No problem. Um, there are some other important pieces that were extending, the, the federal government's helping to extend um, uh, the amount of weeks you can get on employment. That is forthcoming. We don't have information on that, but stay tuned. Um, and then it also is opening up unemployment. So people who, uh, currently aren't able to get unemployment, like gig, gig economy workers, self-employed, self-sole proprietors. Um, we're hearing the end of April for, for those changes. We need to get some more information from the federal government. In the interim, Christine, let me just ask the question the best way I know how. Asking people, those gig employer employees who have lost all sources of income, where are they going to go until the end of April? How are they going to get help? It's a good question. Um, and I don't have uh, an a easy answer. There are some funds that have been set up around the state. Um, one of There are some people who will not qualify. So people without work authorization, um, usually because of their immigration status, they'll, they're not going to apply. They're not going to be eligible for any of these programs. And there is an undocu fund particularly for those workers. Um, for restaurant workers, um, there is a restaurant workers relief fund um, that has been set up. Um, the city of Boston and actually the governor have also just announced some funds. Um, and there's one I just saw also from the Mass Cultural Council and they work with artists and they had a, I think, million or over a million dollar fund uh, to support artists who of course are, are out of work. Um, during this time and, and not traditionally employed. So there is not an easy answer, but we're gonna keep working on that.
And I'm just going to, I'm going to reiterate that, you know, any of the state delegation that has this information about where these funds are, I'm going to make a giant assumption that you're going to be pushing it out through your own websites. Somerville Media Center has made a commitment, um, both at the local level and beyond, that we're going to push as much information out there during the emergency as we can. Everything right. from the healthcare system to what's happening locally to how people get assistance. But you know what overwhelms people during this time is the amount of information that's coming out. And there are always gonna be people who slip through that safety net. So we're trying to make aware that don't give up hope just because you don't qualify for certain things. There, is, there are people and agencies out there who are willing to help you. It's so important, and I appreciate all the work that the Somerville Media Center is doing to get the word out. And you're right, there is so much information. It's changing every day. Um, and for people to know, you can contact you know, my office. I'll, I'll you know, say my phone number and email at the end of this segment, but any of the Somerville or Medford delegation, um, we're all working really hard um, at talking to constituents. Our phones still work. You can reach any of us um, at any time and, um, and we can help you know, with unemployment or health care or lost wages and a variety of things that are happening. A couple of other things I know you wanted to um, talk about, the house itself and how it's functioning. How is, is the house itself completely shut down now and all working virtually or are there some essential people still going into the state house? Um, we are recommended not to go into the state house. So as you can tell, probably I'm in my dining room um, and that's where I do most of my work to, um, to try to model uh, safe behavior as well. And I can do um, most work virtually. So I am on Zoom calls or phone calls with, um, with my colleagues, committee members, members of leadership all the time. We are keeping in actually very close contact. Um, we have uh, sessions still where we can pass things on a voice vote, um, which, usually, which means no one's objecting and we're all kind of working together to make sure it's a consensus bill. Um, so that's how we've been able to pass things so far. And we're still figuring out how to take a roll call vote. Um, we're still trying to figure out if there's a way to do that virtually or if we have to do it in person. Um, it's hard to do it in person with social distancing protocols. And, and um, you have many more members than say a small city council does or right. a commission does. Right, there's 160 of us and there are some staff that do need to be there. Um, so it would be hard to, to maintain the right distancing protocols. Um, so we're still, we're still wrestling with that, but at the same time, we're here for constituents, we're still passing legislation and there's a lot to do. And your staff is being excellent during this broadcast because they're, they're telling you to mention something else. So this is, this is very much like being in the studio where you could have somebody in studio with you, but from uh, your staff, um, they're saying, don't forget to mention the Medford Urgent Care mm -hmm. that is now open for testing. It is not a CVS, but it is open for testing. Over it in is. So this is the urgent care in my district. It is the physician one urgent care. It's um, right next to Lens Crafters, sort of across from Station Landing and McDonald Park. Um, I guess that's, that's actually the Wellington Circle shopping. Wellington district. Circle, I believe, is what they call it. Yes, the big shopping center. It's on the corner of that. Um, and they stepped up. They contacted me a couple weeks ago and said, uh, "We want to do testing. How is this going to work?" Um, we connected them with the state and with the city and the city did it, uh, both did an amazing job in getting that off the ground quickly. So we're thankful to have, you know, partners like them step up. Um, to do that, you do have to be pre-screened before you go. You shouldn't just show up. Um, you can call your doctor and figure out if you need a test. And that's pretty much very similar to the way that CHA was doing it here in Somerville. Yeah. Pre-screened, CHA members only. Um, you know, they may be changing that in the future as the testing capability becomes more prevalent when we get more kits. Mm -hmm. It may be a case of where you come in with a doctor's authorization, no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. So if somebody happens to be out in Great Barrington and they're staying out there for their own reasons, but they actually live in Medford, they could get tested out in Great Barrington. So I, I guess, you know, what I'm trying to get across to folks is, this is all new to everybody. 
including the elected officials, including the governor, including the highest levels in the federal system. So what we're trying to do on, on, from the media center standpoint is keep people updated as fast as we can. The accuracy of the information, the timeliness of the information. Um, so that's gonna lead me in. There's one more thing they want me to mention is the Restaurant Workers Relief Fund is another example that's out there for gig worker, uh, restaurant workers, um, you know, apply for anything. I mean, my, my advice to folks is you're going to need money. You're going to need help. Apply for it. Um, don't, for those of us who are fortunate, um, I'm not applying for anything. You know, there are other people who are in much more dire straits than I am. Let me ask one more thing about um, at the state house. Do we have, do we need to know anything that's coming up next week? in terms of emergency yeah. relief? Um, so I want to talk about housing, which is this week, but also, um, so I'll, that first and then next week. So on housing, I mentioned the commercial leases, but um, there's a, an important bill that the House just passed, actually last Friday, we're working on it with the Senate now, um, and it would stop evictions during this crisis um, and until 30 days after the crisis, it would stop evictions and foreclosures. So to clarify, that's not, not rent necessarily, but it's just keeping people in their homes and stopping the eviction and the foreclosure. And of course, the idea is that we don't, we want everyone who has a home to be able to stay in that home right now. Um, How long do we you know, think that's going to go on, that order of stopping evictions? It is written right now as 30 days um, after the emergency is over. Um, so we're waiting on the Senate to take action again, hopefully today on that. And I'm hopeful that'll get to the governor very soon. And it's just to stop evictions and foreclosures. Um, next week, we are looking at one of the challenges is trying to cancel the MCAS and um, give the, our local educators more flexibility in this incredibly difficult time. Um, and we're also looking at the budget. We usually would be doing the state budget. Um, we'd be debating that next week. We are just figuring out how to address all of these challenges before us. And I've promised you and I've promised the rest of the delegation that we're going to give you airtime every week. We're also in the process of trying to figure out how to do a town hall for the Somerville, Medford, Cambridge State delegation. Christine Barber, I want to thank you. I know time goes fast, but you're welcome back anytime. Hope to see you at the town hall once we get it organized. Thanks, Joe. Thank you so much to the Somerville Media Center for having me. ChristineBarber.org is a way to reach me. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you very much. For the Somerville Media Center, this has been Joe Lynch with State Representative Christine Barber. See you next time.